North Korea has that. 32 out of 33 modern industrialized countries have that. How are you going to pay for it? We're going to be like North Korea. We'll have to borrow the money from China. Where are you going to find the money? Hey, and welcome to the show. Kind of a new uh new theme I'm trying. Uh, I'm try I want to uh use the MMT experience uh what I have learned so far to help debunk uh mainstream media, uh mainstream economic uh ec or economics. Like for instance, we've had a lot of Republicans go after uh, people like myself who uh, get Social Security. Now, they want to cut Social Security. I looked it up. Only thing that they can cut is administration. Uh, you know, cut people's jobs, um, set the age limit past 90. So I think right now it's at like 65 to 70. Uh, that's late retirement. I believe you can still re early retirement, like 55 or so. Anyway, so the point being is, uh, it's uh, what I've learned is either way, at both sides of the fence or both sides of the political aisle, <clears throat> both tend to do a lot of fear mongering. A lot of fear mongering. Uh, Republicans, Social Security, so called deficit spending. If you don't know what deficit spending is, that is government literally giving you money during recession, like the pandemic, for instance, and the um, and the checks we got in the mail or direct deposited. Uh, I think it was like the twelve, fourteen, or it was over a thousand dollars or some. Uh, and I think it was the the more focused uh, spending, which MMT actually. Um, says we should be doing is focused spending not just you know uh giving anybody who has who already has tons of money uh more money as far as that part goes they already get money through stocks and bonds and other things of that nature plus whatever you know money they have on hand or you know family has whatever the case may be 
Those people, no, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't have gotten any stimulus, uh, stimulus money whatsoever. But they did. Uh, the beginning of it, um, it was not focused. Everybody got money. Um, even some MMTers who didn't uh, was weren't uh, hurting for uh, for uh, jobs at the time. I still aren't uh, academics, you know th those people. Um, I think he, I think even L. Randall Ray in the interview said that he got, he received a a check he didn't need. Uh, so and he even advocated in that same interview. Um, I forget where was it? it was like um like Money News or some. Uh, you you have to look it up as far as that part goes. But anyway, or if I or if I'm able to find it uh after this, I'll 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 put put as a link. Anyway, point being is MMT advocates for uh, focused spending, uh, advocates for a uh, job guarantee for anybody who wants to work, can get a job because uh, unemployment is the uh, monetarist or the current economic systems, uh, economic, uh, economic stabilizer, uh, meaning try to, that's how they try to get money uh, out of the economy is through uh, unemployment and other things of that nature. Um. Anyway, so the job guarantee would actually be a helpful start when it comes to unemployment, because that keeps people uh, who were working keep working and maintaining uh, their current lifestyle, and depending on how much they were paid, either get the same amount or slightly more. But either way, they won't go bankrupt because of you know not unable to pay a mortgage or rent or bills and stuff like that. So that would be counter unemployment, but it wouldn't necessarily be like the was it be all end all not end all part of it because it is it would be an optional thing. So um, anyway, so it'd be an alternative to uh, just sitting at home and collecting a paycheck if you actually want to work, and it'd be another option as far as that part goes. Everything that MMT. Uh, talks about and advocates for is quite literally in uh, deflationary everything medicare for all job guarantee uh wage increases those are deflationary overall because it keeps people being able to uh work and keep people out of bankruptcy as far as medical bills and also uh to a certain degree if medicare for all was put in place uh, that would allow uh, for workers to maybe get a raise because their jobs, their bosses wouldn't be holding up uh, insurance benefits as a way of, uh, of stamping down strikes, stuff like that. Anyway, uh, the point being here is Social Security, you it can never go broke. Uh, we are a sovereign currency nation, meaning... We have uh, the government, the Congress has the monopoly on whatever money is spent because you have to spend it before they tax it out. That I mean, taxes are a provision for government. It's a liability the government needs to give back in some form, whether it be in taxation or, um, yeah, ta tax, direct taxation or taxes, uh, taxes at a, uh, at a state and local level. Um, because if memory serves me, when state, when, when uh, localities, states, and cities, and other things tax, they take you know seventy percent of it for you know other thing, other programs that maybe that they're funding uh, at a state level, and the rest does go back to social, does go back to to the uh, federal level. But the federal, but the federal uh, government does not need it to to spend. It needs to spend then tax. Um, anyway, so let's see. Now, what I'm going to show you, or at least attempt to show you, is a little bit obscure, but hopefully you get the point. Let's see. Uh, now, Social Security does not need uh, payroll taxes. Uh, it was FDR, I think it was FDR, uh, stated the whole reason why he was putting it as a payroll tax was so that no politician can go after it. Literal quote. Uh, I think this is as literal as quote as I could put it as far as that part goes. Anyway, so yeah, so they don't actually need payroll taxes, but they do that, you know, so that no politician, no politician can uh, cut benefits. Um, let's see. 
Now, they also mentioned in here, as you can see, uh, public traded U.S. government debt, which is also U.S. treasuries. Uh, these securities can be redeemed at face value at any time to pay fund obligations, meaning that they can, they can cash them at the Fed, and the Fed then uh, accredits uh, the, the Social Security account so that we all get paid as far as the part goes. Anyway, so let me see if I can actually... I'm going to pause this and look for that quote. Now, I have shared this quote quite a lot uh, in response to uh, Republicans who, I think it's Ron Johnson, who was running on cutting Social Security. He has since kind of backed off on that because I think a lot of people have been quoting this, but are at least appointed this quote. Uh, let's see, research note 23, uh, this is a FDR quote. Franklin Roosevelt made a famous remark about Social Security payroll tax to the effect that he designed Social Security to use the payroll tax so no damn politician can ever scrap my Social Security program. See, no damn politician can ever scrap my Social Security program. So I wanted to point that out. Now, a moment ago, I was talking about uh, treasury bonds. Treasury bonds, they are savings accounts at the Fed. In fact, this is the area which uh, they, are, they are issued and they are uh, redeemed. Oh, I did that. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, so let's see. Now, as another scare tactic, uh, the Republicans tend to say that we are in thirty, uh, like thirty-one trillion dollars in debt. Uh, well, thirty-one trillion dollars would mean that there are thirty-one, thirty-one trillion dollars of U.S. currency in treasuries. Uh, let's see, yeah, let's see. Total issue uh, so far this year is it looks like um, eight. Now I, that's rounded up into millions, I believe. So let's see, either that's eight billion. I think it's eight billion six hundred twenty million two hundred ninety. Now, how much have we actually uh, redeemed? Now, government account series, which is literally government issued uh, uh, treasuries that the federal government, the treasury, uh, buys. Um, it looks like it's at the seven trillion dollar mark right now. Uh, now I used to have, I used to uh, say this all the time. Uh, it got to a point where I believe it was a hundred and thirty one trillion that was redeemed uh, since the beginning of the year, I believe, or at least since the beginning of the um, fiscal, uh, the the fiscal quarter, I guess. Now let's see. I don't know if I can find that, but uh, this is withdrawals here. And, and as you can see, uh, $1,133 billion has uh, been withdrawn. And also, if you remember right, I don't know if you remember this or not, but uh, for the longest time, the Republicans were fear-mongering about China. China, we owe in China uh, money this borrowing from China and other places and other countries like that uh, we can't borrow our own money uh, now the interest rates that they that people keep talking about uh, is is money that is paid in interest on US treasuries it's kind of like if you had a uh, a savings account at a bank uh, you would get like a a, you know, an interest payment dividend or some to that effect like every six months uh in regular accounts is like maybe one cent or something here it's more than that obviously because it's the federal reserve and only banks and uh and and uh, u.s uh, treasuries has treasuries you know uh, same as accounts uh and also uh foreign governments uh have that uh and they get paid uh interest rates as well anyways as far as china goes um china had like just a few months ago actually had uh redeemed uh, like 
close to seven billion or something. It was it was billions. I'll just say that I can't remember the exact number right now, but it was in it was in the billions, and literally nothing in the in the mainstream news about that. Even though it's been a talking point this whole time for the past say twenty years, it's been literally I mean, Obama talked about it, uh, Mitt Romney talked about it, um, Paul Ryan talked about it. Uh, Biden, I think, even talked about it one time. Um, so yeah, is all this is the politics right now? Unfortunately, is not about policies or the or the good of the voters. It's about fear mongering. But both sides do it. Um, so, I mean, uh, see Warnock in Georgia, uh, for the the rest basically that were uh, going to the runoffs and primaries. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, ran on two thousand uh, dollar checks you know, for while we were in while we were in the uh, pandemic. Nothing happened to that. Uh, I don't even think he fought for it. Uh, and now they're up for re-election. So think about that when when all it was all said and done. Also think about the fact that Biden uh, has been bragging about something that the Republicans have been wanting him to do in the first place, and that's cutting the deficit. And in case you need a reminder, deficit is government spending that goes into our pockets. However, at the same time, uh, when people uh, talk about interest rates, interest rates, uh, it's literally like it, 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 it makes borrowing more expensive. And through that makes buying certain, you know, buying things at the grocery store more expensive because businesses had to have uh, credit in order to be able to buy more as far as goods for servicing. Um, and so everything goes up because of that. Uh, interest rates do nothing about inflation. Inflation, on the, for the most part, is supply chain. We have seen that for the most part for the past few years. Uh, supply chain has, has been going down uh, for the most part since the 70s. In fact... Um, it, it went down mostly in the late 90s after, I think, after uh, uh, Glass-Steagall was uh, was repealed because that opened up uh, a lot of things that happened during that time. Uh, a lot Around that same time, a, lo a lot more of the supply chain went overseas. A lot of outsourcing went out. Uh, people started losing their jobs, stuff like that. So uh, MMT advocates for... Uh, full employment advocates for uh, manufacturing up up to about uh, at least eighty five percent of the supply chain here uh, uh, at home, uh, and also advocates for uh, again Medicare for all. Medicare for all would be a step up as far as rising uh, uh, as far as wages because the bosses wouldn't have uh, health insurance to be as a bait to stop strikes from happening in the first place it wouldn't have control over that uh in fact it would probably it would probably force them to actually up the uh, up the hourly uh wage because they wouldn't have any other any other uh reason for not to do it um anyway so that's so that's what i'm talking about as far as that part goes let me see if i can find that one actually uh let's see where would that uh, where would that be at uh nope uh, no, 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 maybe this is it. Yes, this is the uh, uh, combination of all of the uh, other countries that hold U.S. treasuries. Japan still being number one, uh, China being number two. Now, it was more than 971 billion, but oh well. Anyway, so let's see. United Kingdom holds the treasury, so when we so when the Fed pays on interest, they're paying every single one of these countries money. They the interest is going to all of these countries, uh, actually helping those economies as well. Uh, so there's a good and a bad as far as interest payments go. Um, anyway, I wanted to show you that. Yes, basically. So he is a, 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 a,
but yeah, I wanted to show you all that, and hopefully you understand a little bit more. Um, as always, you can subscribe to this channel, and also check out uh, the still doing tech book MMT, uh, reading from the tech book, uh, except I do it audio only, and on patreon.com slash down with MMT, um, but also you can check out the progressives, the progressives does uh, great uh, radio uh, interview shows, like on Mac G, they also have articles up, uh, homegrown articles basically, uh, anybody and everybody who volunteers for progressives in some ways, uh, has an article up there, we also have outside uh, authors, uh, also on He does it every Monday, I believe. Uh, he also does a show with Jordan Sheridan on Staz Coup, uh, and he does a interview segment slash um, just a talking uh, segments on also Staz Coup. Anyways, check him out. Either way, uh, I'd like to thank you for joining me on this first episode of Debunking Mainstream Economy, uh, Economist. Um, Subscribe if you like, uh, but go to my Patreon. You can be a Patreon for as little as, as little as a dollar, um, apparently. So, yeah, join up. Uh, support progressive.org, Support MMT. Learn MMT, or at least try to learn M MMT. And everything uh, economic you hear from mainstream is not. That's not the real shit. Uh, you should follow people like Warren Mosler. You should follow people like Mike Norman. You should fo be following uh, Steffi Kelton, uh, Bill Mitchell, El Randall Ray, uh, Stephen Keen, uh, myself. Uh, you should also be uh, following uh, Steve Grumbine. Uh, you should be following uh, Real, Pro Real Progressives in Action on Twitter, on YouTube, uh, Facebook, you name it. We are everywhere. So if you want to know the actual uh, the actual score as far as uh, the economy goes, uh, go it that way. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Peace out for now, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. And a uh, new episode of You uh, Down MMT Textbook Edition will be up tomorrow uh, on my Patreon. Again, that's patreon.com slash You Down with MMT. Thank you, and peace out for now.